Welcome to the tutorial on class AB output stage. In the class B, what we had observed was that the Q point was at VC is equal to VCC or IC is equal to 0 milliamps. That is, the transistor is at 0 bias. So the base emitter junction will be forward bias and brought into the active region only when VI is greater than some cut in voltage of the base emitter junction. And when VI or the input voltage is less than the cut in voltage, the output current will be equal to 0. And we had seen that there was a dead band that was present in the case of the class B amplifiers. So the output waveform that was obtained was not an exact replica of the input but was a little distorted and that distortion was referred to as the crossover distortion. So in order to overcome this particular crossover distortion, what we do is we locate the operating point slightly above the cutoff and since the Q point is located slightly above the cutoff in a class B but much below the center of the DC load line in class A, these kind of amplifiers will be referred to as the class AB amplifiers because they neither lie in the class A nor in the class B. So that is why referred as class AB power amplifiers. So here you can see the waveform that is the collector current waveform corresponding to the class AB amplifier which goes beyond pi in this particular case. So class AB amplifiers belong to the intermediate class between class A and B involving the biasing the transistor at a non-zero DC current much smaller than the peak value current of the sine wave signal. Therefore, the transistor will conduct for an interval slightly greater than half of a cycle. And the resulting conduction angle is greater than 180 degree but much less than 360 degree that you can see here. And if class AB stage has another transistor that conducts for interval slightly greater than that of the negative half cycle and the currents from the two transistors are combined in the load then it is possible to obtain both the cycles. So during the intervals near zero crossings of the input sinusoid, both transistors will conduct. So if you want to look into the waveforms representing the class A, as mentioned earlier, this lies between the class A and the class B. That is why the operating region or the Q point is not at the cutoff nor at the center, it is in between. So that is why the transistor will conduct for a slightly greater interval than 180 degree but less than 360 degree. And these waveforms corresponding to IB current, IC current and VC are observed here. So moving on to the circuit operation of the class AB amplifier. In the class AB amplifier, the, cl the crossover distortion can be virtually eliminated by biasing the complementary output transistors at a small non-zero current. So that is why if you observe or compare the circuit of the class B and this circuit, you can see that there is an extra bias voltage VBB by 2 which is connected at both the base of the transistors so that it lies in between. 180 and 360 degree and this bias voltage VBB is applied between the bases of QN and QP and again we are going to analyze considering the case for input voltage VI to be equal to 0, output voltage will be equal to 0 and a voltage VBB by 2 appears across the base emitter junction of each of the transistor that is QN and QP. Now assuming that transistor that are used are perfectly matched devices, current IN and IP which is equal to the QSEN current which is equal to IS e to the power VBB by 2 VT. Why VBB by 2 VT? Because here the value of our current VE voltage because this is usually e to the power VB into v VBE into VT. And what we have done here is we have divided or applied the VB voltage to be equal to VBB by 2. That is why we have mentioned here VBB by 2 into VT. When the input voltage VI goes positive by a certain amount, the voltage at the base of the transistor QN increases by the same amount and the output becomes positive which is almost equal to V out to be equal to VI plus VBB by 2 minus VBEN. 
obtained by applying KVL to this particular loop. So that is denoted as equation number 2 and the positive voltage V out will cause a current IL to flow through RL and thus the current IN must increase. So IN is equal to IP plus IL because of applying KCL to this particular node. So when IL increases, IN also will increase as per equation number 3 and this increase in IN will be accompanied by the corresponding increase in VBEN that is this particular voltage and since the voltage between the two bases remains constant at VB beam the increase in VBEN will result in equal decrease in VBEP and hence the current IP also decreases. So to show you the relationship between IN and IP and the transfer characteristics we have VBEN plus VBEP to be equal to VBB that is what we have done here we have combined the two and VT LAN of IN by IS this is just that we have taken the threshold voltage and applied logarithm on both the sides of the equation we get IN into IP to be equal to IQ square named as equation number 4 thus as IN increases IP will decrease by the same ratio while the product will remain constant so from equation 3 and equation 4 combined together it is possible to yield IN for a given IL as a quadratic equation and we have IP square plus IL into IP is equal to IQ square. IP square plus IL into IP is equal to IQ square. But we also know that if you rearrange this particular equation, IP is equal to IN minus IL and substituting that we can write it in terms of IN square minus IL into IN minus IQ square to be equal to 0 which is named as equation number 5. From the equation 5 for the positive output voltages the load current is supplied by the transistor QN which acts as an output emitter follower. Meanwhile QP will be conducting a current that decreases as the voltage V out will increase. So for larger output voltage V out the current in QP is ignored. For positive input voltages the opposite will occur that is the IL will be supplied by QP which acts as an emitter follower while QN conducts a current that gets smaller as VI becomes more negative. So this equation 4 that you see here will hold good for negative input voltages as well. So from the transfer characteristics what we can see is that for a very small value of input voltage VI both the transistors will conduct and as VI is increased or decreased one of the two transistors will take over the operation and the transition is smooth there is no crossover distortion or we can say the cross to crossover distortion is eliminated because of the absence of the dead band and the maximum limit and the minimum limit for the value of is VCC minus VCE sat in both the cases because we are using a dual supply type of a push-pull amplifier so that is why it is VCC here and minus VCC here. The negative part is obtained because of the transistor QP whereas the positive limit is obtained because of the transistor QN.